This is a sort of thinking man's computer game. It's called fit the dihydrofolate reductase molecule to the methotrexate molecule. <laughs> That's uh, pretty hard to say. But for the biophysicists who are using these computer screens to design new drugs, it's even harder to do. Their problem is that the image on the screen is in just two dimensions, whereas, of course, in reality, the molecules themselves are in three dimensions. Now, we see in 3D because each of our eyes gives a slightly different image. So if I was to give you a brand new set of eyes in the shape of these two cameras, this is your left eye and this is your right eye. And the brain integrates these different views and does a few calculations and figures out that I'm closer to you than what's behind me. But how do you get a 3D image onto a flat screen? Well, the movie industry has had a few ideas about that. Early attempts at 3D, like Eye on the Ball, involved superimposing two images, one coloured red and one green. The red image went to the left eye and the green to the right. The audience wore red and green glasses, and the effect was quite good, but it would only work successfully with films shot in black and white. More recently, films like Metal Storm presented a colour system by projecting two images separated by Polaroid filters. But that doesn't work on television. Yet, paradoxically, it is a Polaroid TV system that's been developed at the University of Leeds to help with their molecular research. It relies on the way a TV picture is built up. Two sets of lines for each picture. First, one set of lines is drawn in. Then a second set fills in the gaps. But for the 3D system, the second set draws a slightly offset view. So, now we have those two pictures following one after the other. And with a television screen, that has to happen 50 times a second. You can see them both flickering there. Once again, what we need to do is to make sure that the right eye gets the right picture and the left eye the left. And for that, use these Polaroid and liquid crystal specs. Now, if I drive them uh, manually, you can see that they black out each eye in turn. And incidentally, they use exactly the same principle as this. Here, Polaroid and liquid crystals combine to make dark numbers on a light background. If you take two bits of polarising material and you have their planes of polarisation in line, you can see through them. If you turn one, then no light gets through. But uh, 50 times a second, no chance. Well, that's where you add the liquid crystal, because it produces a similar type of rotation electrically and as fast as you like, even 50 times a second. To synchronise them with the alternate pictures, so that the right one goes to the right eye and the left to the left, there are two dots here, one for each side, and these photosensors detect those. And now the lenses are flickering so fast that you can barely see the difference. Now, although you can't actually see the 3D at home, if you do look through the glasses, you can see, at least, that the lenses are synchronised because through the glasses, there we are, the flickering has stopped. Although the system was originally developed for graphics and computer-aided design systems, it could well be the way forward to bringing the full glory of 3D TV into your front room. Next week we'll be back in comfortingly familiar 2D, but until then, take another look at the electrifying mysteries of the unknown. Good night.